Hey there. <sighs> okay, back at it again. This Friday, beautiful day. A um, little overcast, but I'm super excited to um, have the opportunity to talk with Chef um, Shara Sanders. Um, let me see if Chef Ro is here. Yes. Okay. It's going to be a good one, y'all. Hey, Chef. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> Long time to see. It's been years, right? I know it. We, I feel like you know, social media is very seductive. We feel like we sort of connect with the folks, but haven't actually seen your face in a minute. I know. Um, so, first of all, I I think that people should people who are unfamiliar. I'm unsure how to be able to be unfamiliar, but if you people are unfamiliar with you and your work, um, they may know you as. Um, certainly as a veteran, you talk a lot, you advocate on behalf of veterans um, through your work. You are, I think, archetypal as a chef because of your upbringing and sort of how infused the industry was um, in your mom and just through sort of your your sort of vision about like, your possibilities in this space from a really early age. Um, but also, I mean, we've seen you on television, right? We've seen you on Chop, we've seen you um, sort of navigate the, the media space really effectively. But, and I also want to preface this by saying that if you haven't seen Jeff Rowe, um, her conversation with uh, Aveda four months ago, uh, or well, 16 yeah. weeks ago, I just reported it. Um, a lot has changed in four months. Like I just, I'm so because right now we are looking at the newly minted chef instructor uh, for TIA. Yes, and that's kind of where I wanted to sort of center our conversation because I'm so excited for this possibility. I think that there's a lot to to interrogate in terms of the function of culinary school. And I just like I look back on that conversation with Rada and like I remember I, I posted a comment. It was like we need Chef Roe um as an instructor randomly. I um, mean you were still thinking about what um like what life was gonna look like if you had gone back to Oceana. I think things were sort of like unclear at that point. And so I don't know, like I feel like maybe we should pick up at that point, right? Because four months ago you were sort of like a lot of us thinking about or sort of seeing the industry is kind of uncertain and we weren't really sure what the city was going to do next and you really thought that sort of your next thing was going to be continuing on there and so what is four months done like what what's what's happening so um i went back to oceana um we opened at 25 per percent capacity like the rest of new york city um yeah. and they brought back a skeleton crew so i was just honored um i've been there for a year so i've been there the least amount of time and to be able to be brought back the first wave um was just it just touched my heart so that's how you know i've been like working and not you know i could like i could really cook because they wouldn't have brought me back you know what i mean that's right so we just hit the ground running. Um, we opened the restaurant in four days and um, just navigating through COVID um, at that level in the industry. And then um, CIA was, so I'm on the faculty board of CIA, which means it's me and a couple of other chefs um, and food entrepreneurs and writers and things like that, who basically help and guide the CIA to be diverse. We know our industry suffers from lack of diversity, um, and no disrespect when I say this, but it's basically um, white male run. Like if you're right, if you're a white man, you're you're gonna be seen in the industry. So just to help CIA and guide them on hiring women, which they do, and hiring people of color, which they do, just to kind of guide them. So um, it's always been my dream. This has always been my retirement plan. But I'm only 30 years old. I didn't think I could obtain this anytime, any soon, um, anytime soon. So I just like, well, what I got to lose? They're hiring. They might not be hiring for the next, you know, if you teach us in a, you've probably been there for 15 plus years. So why not take a step out on faith? I don't know if um, restaurants will close again. I think CIA will have a better backup plan than restaurants right now. Mm -hmm. so I just applied. And then I got a call back to do another interview and then I did that and then I got another call back to do a cooking practical and I thought that was horrible I thought it was probably my worst interview um I've ever done and you know God is good 
<laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. My, my worst is your belly. <laughs> right. So yeah. um, they offered me a full time position as mm. an instructor. And, you know, I did my research because I, I was, I graduated six years ago. And I know that there's Black women that teach, um, I think there's two, if I'm not mistaken, um, African American women that teach in a bachelor's program. Mm -hmm. But I've never heard, or I've never seen a Black woman. So doing my research, it didn't come up. So, mm. um, yeah. So much to unpack there because I know, I think right? That, uh, seriously, okay, so talk to me about, because I remember, I mean, the other thing that I find really fascinating about your story, and I think people don't really, maybe people who don't know, who aren't from this area, don't really know geographically what the CIA is, right? Because like, we got, our, our, back in the day, like, we, I'm, I'm almost a decade older than you, but like, when I was, when I was coming up, New York Restaurant School, CIA, like, in terms of New York City, right? Paul Camp, um, which a turn, I think turn is what turned into ICE. Um, right. New York Restaurant School, which no longer exists and was sort of the one place where a lot of like, if you were New York based, that's kind of one place you could kind of go and be in the city proper, but still have to be derivative. Um, there were some others a little farther out, like there was New England Kone, which a little New England, but you kind of, you sort of saw the, the value going that far. Johnson Wells, Rhode Island. But like, in the so geographic area, there wasn't really a lot. And the CIA was also this kind of off this single thing, because back then, it was really, the function of it and the function of culinary schools in general, when it wasn't bachelor's degree programs, um, they also were thinking more about supplements to working chefs who maybe didn't have edu like didn't have formal education. So a lot of it was like, if you had been working in the industry, you wanted to be able to move more dexterously, you need that kind of credential. So you have ex you had to have a lot more experience than you did you do now, and just this sort of sense of it. Just, it felt particular as a as a place to go and so right. also the geographically in connecticut i feel like you grew up in connecticut right so yeah. there's this sort of sense of like that's right i mean that's kind of close to home in a lot of ways and they also didn't i think they started off the original sort of so, campus yeah, in connecticut. They started originally in new haven connecticut which we know is the home of yale and it was specifically started for veterans who were coming back from the war so it just fits my whole entire story that's right who's come back from war and I'm a chef. So that's kind of how they started. Um, absolutely. That's right. So I guess I'm, just, I, I'm, I bring it up because it feels like such a, it feels a really perfect and timely to it, to CIA for your education. And to kind of go back, I think that there's something really particular about your perspective. Um, I wonder if you could talk to me a little bit about your experience there because I think a lot about like the, I, I, on Facebook the Kone the sh the Black Kone I think they call it Black Kone Alliance something like that like the sort of um, Black Student Union there like have a Facebook group that is super active and I think Black Kone Alliance which is now BCA Global um, sort of was the offshoot of it like the kind of alumni version of that group um, but. Tell me about what it was like to be there. I mean, you you talked a little bit with Loretta about the perspective of having been in the army, um, having tempered a lot of like your time in. So I'm sure that you came in with a lot more seriousness and sort of focus than maybe some students who would come out of high school and maybe didn't have that level of perspective. But what is life like there for students? What is what's the what is the the vibe? <laughs> So to me, um, I feel like the CIA is the Yale, Princeton, Harvard of cooking schools. And mm -hmm. I'm not trying to take away from anybody else, but no. um, I think it's the best school in the world for cooking. And I say that because it's very military in style, meaning you need to be at the right place at the right time in the right uniform. Um, and they play no games. So it's very disciplined. Like you're late, you're probably getting dropped a whole letter grade. That doesn't really happen at any other school um, or any other traditional college. So they're very um, traditional on the industry. You know, we don't have like summer break, if you will. We might have a week off here and a week off there, but like we're going straight through, you know, breakfast class starts at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning because you need to prepare for the entire campus um, by five. So the structure of CIA is exceptional and the discipline is exceptional there. 
Um, I thought 75% of all the teachers were extremely dedicated, um, very helpful in and outside of class. But you know, you have your, every school has their teachers who are there for a paycheck. But um, I think CIA does a great job at making sure people are there because they want to be there. That's why they, they retire after 25 years um, of being at the school. So there's just, just everything about the school. I think the structure, the setup, the classes are phenomenal. Just the way you have to go through culinary fundamentals, which is what I will be taking over and teaching. You know, what's the sauce? What's a, what is denaturization? What is, what is a protein? You know, what is a pH balance? Just the basic science and knowledge they teach you, and then you move up in classes. Then you eventually reach wines, which is huge, because even if you become a sommelier or not, um, you need to know how to pair things, how to cook with yep. it, um, be because wine has tannins, and tannins help break down things, or beer. It's just everything, their product knowledge. The classes are for you to be successful in the industry. And I think that's why it's the best school in the world. And then you can go on to bachelor's and food science and, you know, it, expand on your knowledge. But, like, the associate's program is set to, so that you can walk out and, and be successful. That's so awesome. Um, talk to me about the bachelor's program because I'm really interested in, in how they sort of um, transition. Because I, I, I'm there, no, Johnson Wells, CIA, maybe you want to tell the schools have a bachelor's option. What does that right. look like there? Because I'm interested in, in how you, one, you know, sort of, I think the standard for most schools is that sort of associate's degree, right? And so how do you, not convince, but how do you sort of the structure it so that it, the, the function of the, the extra two years is going to sort of, right. yeah. Which they also have a master's program, which I don't know much about. I'll probably find out when I'm there, but um, bachelor's is more um of the academic so meaning i'm learning about hr i'm learning about what's legal and what's not legal like for example yeah. I've, I've worked at places where they do not give people a break and they make people work during the break and we know that's illegal but if i didn't go through hr i wouldn't have known that was illegal does that make sense so it's classes yeah. like that yeah. it's classes like anthropology of food you know i need to know where food's indigenous to i need to know um you know, in Egypt, they dug up this excavation and they found a clay pot that they made bread, bread out of. You know, I need to know things like that. I need to know the history of food. So you'll get that in the bachelor's program. The number one thing about the bachelor's program is you get to study abroad. So for me, I studied abroad in France. I was classically mm -hmm. French trained. You can go to Spain, you go to China, um, you can go to Singapore. So I think people jump in that program because they want to have the experience to actually go overseas and actually learn from those types of chefs. So I think that's the biggest highlight of the bachelor's program. Um, you do advanced principles of cooking. So you have one cooking class and the bachelor's program to kind of keep you on your toes in the kitchen. But I mean, you're learning, I mean, the plating techniques, you're learning about um, gastronomy and like, you know, things that Grant Atkins do. And, you know, you're learning how to work as a team. Um, chef just walks in and he sits down or she sits down and you, you run the class. So you're kind of learning how to, do everything on your own in the bachelor program in that one class. But um, you do classes like um, financial accounting, which is huge. All yeah. business classes. I need to know what a labor cost is. I need to know what a food cost That's is. Right. What, what is a P&L? Those are things you don't get in the um, associate degree program. But when you take bachelor's, you get all that experience, which is really way more important if you're going to be a restaurant tour. Um, That's right. Because you can teach anybody off the street how to cook but you can't teach everybody how to be a business person. That's right. Right. I would love to circle back to the historic nature of your position, right? Like this, this idea around visibility, right? Like I think, I think a lot about, I've been asked a lot over the last couple of years. Um, so the scholarship is sort of infusing more um, and we have more opportunities to think about culture in our work and how you show up fully formed, how you show up like as a whole person, right? How you bring yourself to the work you do. Um, and so culturally, I think that's a separate conversation because there's a lot of conversation around the responsibility of culinary schools to infuse more diversity culturally into what they're teaching, right? Like sort of breaking outside of the, the framework of France, Italy, Asia as the spaces that you should consider as valuable. Um, and how you do that um, effectively is subjective but in a lot of ways like your physical presence 
as an instructor, right? The your physical blackness as a um, as an instructor is important. Um, so I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about what that looks like in terms of never having a, a woman before in a position of authority in that in that way, um, and what that looks like for you in terms of or how if that affects how you sort of going to show up. Um, whether you're considering that at all. <laughs> I mean, for me, I'm, I'm not, I start on Monday and I've had influx of calls and emails and DMs from Black, Hispanic, Asian students, people of color that yeah. they're like in tears. So just on an emotional, psychological level, um, I'm, I'm not even there and I'm already showing up just because yeah. this is such a historic, like you said, moment. For the industry, not even just the school. This is this, I just made a legacy in the history, and I'm I'm so grateful for that. So, um, I didn't. I had when I attended the school, I had one black instructor. He was a male, and it bothered me also as a student. Like, there's no woman of color. There's no more black men of color. Um, we don't have any curriculum kind of geared towards. African American studies, which I heard the school is kind of working on. Um, we don't have any. I mean, we we cover North African food, but that's in the middle. Yeah. That's like in the Mediterranean class, so it doesn't make any. It should be separate. Yep. Africa is an entire continent. We need to break down all of that, and not just jollof rice. Like we need that's to right. like really. No, seriously, because think about no. it. No, my mom buys Carolina rice, right? If it wasn't for the transatlantic slave. They the, that rice won't even be over here. So we need to like really think about African American studies, um, and not just soul food because there were Negro um, natives here in America. So kind of what does that look like? Also, not not just focus on Africa, but if we're talking about um, North American the, cuisine and, the whole and rice, facts, basketball, Jones, facts, right? So there's native um, Negro culture here um and we need to explore what that looked like not just you know the native americans that we see today does that make sense so i think one million percent I'm here to show up for that i'm i would like to once i get my foot in the door i would like to take over the black culinary society that I, that's going to be mine i already claim that i want that and i want to guide them because i think like i had a student she's not a student anymore um and obviously i'm going to keep her name confidential but she actually mm -hmm. called me i don't talk to students so don't call me don't call me i'm not answering and i'm not dming y'all back but what i can say she said i dropped out of school because i had a really difficult time with mm -hmm. a situation at the school and i dropped out but now that you're there i'm going to reapply and i'm coming back to school and she's actually trying to open up the first restaurant on hbc college they're trying to open up a restaurant for HBC colleges now, and she's involved in that. And she's like, "Well, I want to know how to get involved in James Beard, and I'm gonna give I'm gonna give them the game because That's nobody right. told me how to be a part of James Beard. Nobody told me how to be a part of National Restaurant Association. Nobody said anything to me. So I'm there to give them the game. So they don't need to be running around trying to figure things out. If I have the knowledge, I'm gonna pass it down. So That's how I'm gonna show up. And That's the most right. important thing about showing up for me is, as you know, our industry suffers a lot from drug addiction and like mental health and just all this chaos and sexism and just a whole bunch of garbage i'm going to mm -hmm. break that inside because now i have you first right i'm the first class you're going to go through i'm going to teach you teamwork dedication i'm going to break down all the cycles from with the inside and that's what chef should have been doing i don't that know just, you know we're just sending them out there and they're becoming I've worked with some chefs that graduated from CIA and Johnson Wells, and they're the, some of the most disgusting, craziest, abusive chefs. And I'm not saying the school did that. But no. what I'm saying is the teacher, we need to break. If I see that in my class, it's not happening. You don't want to work with the other person, you need to work with the other person. You know, you don't want to be a team player, I'm going to build that. There is no person in my class. When I was there, there was professors flipping over garbage pans, making us get on our knees and pick up. The school is completely different. Because the industry needs to be different. So I'm not going to tolerate none of that. I'm going to build you up to build you up. This is not the military, right, where we break you down to build you up. I'm going to build you up to build you up. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm showing up. And if you are in my class, whether you are of color or not, I will make sure that you are successful and that you are going to the industry and you will do your part. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 
Well, because the, the other part of it as well, I think it's so it's so interesting. To, it's so good to hear because um, I've been reconnecting with um, the alum, like the alumni um, association from my school too, and it's interesting to sort of see strides because I think there's also something really inherently problematic about this conversation we keep having around sort of not entering spaces, right? Like you can't really affect change if you aren't present, and so right. the. the something about your presence um, being transformational sort of um, monumental for students is certainly true, but I think there's also something that's really going to be infectious and beautiful about your presence as an instructor for other instructors, right? You sort of level set right. the spaces. Right. You, you tend to level set the spaces you enter just by virtue of who you are, but I think also this sort of youthful modern take um, right. on what students really need is going to be really interesting to watch evolve there I, um, I just I, I'm so excited for it I can't wait to see this, what you do I mean I'm actually working with Dr. Harris um, on that African American initiative you're talking about so I will be seeing you um, yeah. but there's something on that. yeah yeah but I wonder if and if, if y'all just join us, we are here with the very brilliant Rashad Sanders, um, newly minted CIA um, chef instructor, starting on Monday. Um, and we're going to leave room at the end if y'all have particular questions. We see in the comments, but um, we're going to leave a little time at the end for direct questions. You can drop them in the little comment bar or um, just hold them and put them in the comments and we'll see them. Um, I, I wonder if, you, if you're thinking at all about... Because I know you say you're going to be working, and it's it's so perfect as well. Like um, those kind of fundamental classes, right? Those sort of those building block kind of classes. But that's I can see clearly why that's where you're going to be. Um, where your gifts are going to lie initially. Um, but I wonder if you're thinking it all about. Could you talk a little bit about the necessity of? reflecting the kind of industry you want to see rather than preparing them for like the worst case scenario of what you think the industry is going to be. And I wonder if you, or even, the, I mean, from what you're saying from the school itself, um, what tangible because and sort of professionals is but I guess I'm wondering because right the articles written about students being like dissatisfied what I mean you wouldn't have signed on if you didn't feel like there were strides being made or um, kind of intentionality in that, but I guess I'm wondering what what that looks like in terms of like campus life, especially in the midst of COVID, right? I, I feel like there's probably a lot that shifted just because of the moment. Um, yeah. But what that looks like in terms of campus culture? Um, like you want to know? Like I'm thinking <laughs> about like I don't know. I, I guess it's a lot. It's a lot. That question is a lot. But I guess I'm wondering. I'm thinking about the freshmen that are going to come into your class right. and how is this, the campus culture that you, they're walking into now that you're about to start in different than the one you walked into? Um, if it is, I mean, if it's not, I mean, then what, I mean, what are the things that you Right. I mean, I can only do so much because I'm only one class. So what you, yeah. what I would like to do is, like I said, when I interviewed, they asked, like, what kind of class are you interested in? I was like, first and foremost, culinary, culinary fundamentals, because I'm the first. I have you first. So if I can spark that interest or I can, like, get, be that light, if I can be that encouragement, no matter who you have after me, and, like, even if you're outside of my class, you, you can still come to my class. Like, for example, I mm -hmm. felt right? And 
horrible teacher. I don't even know if he's there anymore. Really, really nasty teacher. Um, I failed fish and I was so discouraged. I was like crying all over the place in the hallway. And I didn't have a teacher that I could have went to and be like, hey, you know, give me some encouragement. Like, oh, if you fail, I fail too. I fail fish. Let me tell you how I made it up. Or I went, I was, I'm horrible at math. I had to take calling math three times. That's real. And people need to understand that because I think I'm very really transparent. I'm going to let you know, you know, my mistakes in the industry and my mistakes at school so that you can be like, oh, wow, if Chef Rowe failed three times calling her math, it's okay. I can still do it and look at where she's at. I feel like a lot of the instructors that I had were not relatable in that way. I thought they were so perfect. Even mm. when I got to like, oh, God, be so perfect, but then I was like, well, there is no, there is no such thing as perfect. Every day you grow. So for me to be growing, they're going to see me grow and they're going to want to grow as well. Always come back to my class. You're having a hard day. You're having, you need extra tutoring. Even outside of my class, that's what I'm there for. Because it's not just, I'm not just a teacher. I'm a mentor. There's, there's, mm. like, there's teachers and then there's mentors. And like, I really want to grow and shape these people from the inside out. So if you leave my class and you have a bad teacher, you have a bad day, you're going to remember every day. How's everybody doing? Leave that at the door. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. Leave it at the door. Students don't know how to do that. No, no chef instructor kind of taught us leave it at the door. So now I'm fighting with the group leader. Now this person's fighting with this person. So I'm, all of that's going to be changed. Mm. Period. And they need to start putting like undercover students in classes. I don't know because I think some people need to be looked at and kind of see their process as well. So if you see my process, maybe they'll like it and they'll be able to pass it on to the next the next classes. If yeah. That makes sense. One hundred, a million percent. I, I, I think I've asked it mainly because I think I thought about that many, many moons ago when I was in culinary school. Um, to have like a chef and like you sort of get assigned like a, a it's it's not formal, but it's like it's sort of is this the instructor is kind of gonna track you through your program right. and it's a sense of like is that a kind of route? Is that sort of that like? Do you have somebody to go to, right? That 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 idea about being able to have somebody to ask those questions to it to feel like you have that kind of connection. I mean, I think I feel like even if that's not formal, like that's who you are. So I'm sure right. you can. And I have maybe one or two out of the entire program. I went to CIA for three and a half, four years. So mm -hmm. one or two out of that amount of time is not a lot. Um, so I think we should do better at that. It's just making sure that outside of my class, you still have access to me as a mentor i mean okay so you talked about how sort of this sort of chef instructor this kind of you know this teacher's life was sort of your retirement plan you had thought about that like you know but i guess i'm interested in what your days are going to look like because i think that there's also is this this probably still room for you to do all the other cool things you think you want to do because that stability is a big thing right the the kind of like, you know what your schedule is going to be. You have sort of framework for this part of your life. What's, what else are you working on? Because I feel like there's maybe a chance for you to have some breathing room in some ways. Um, you know, the stability of your day job will allow you to maybe think more expansively about other things you want to be working on. Because, I don't know. Right. I mean, for me, if you know me um, and if you work with me, there is no days off for me. So, like, for example, before I got this opportunity, I'm, I was working on a visual podcast with another CIA alumni. We did that on the weekends. So as long as I have any time off, like I'm doing something, it doesn't matter if I have Monday through Friday, I will always make time to put into my own self. That's what an entrepreneur does. Um, That's right. I will, I will still open up my own restaurant. Point blank period. Mark my words. doesn't matter. Mm. Um, CIA will give me the network. It might bring me some more investment, but they don't stop the show because my calling is designed by God, not by CIA. Mm. But I will, I will add to CIA. I will be an asset to them. But ultimately, my goal is to be the biggest black female chef in the world. And I'm once I'm got one foot in the door. You know what I mean? So um, there is there is seven days a week. If all my friends know, like I've been studying, I took a week off of Oceana, right? Just to study the entire course guide is already done. So I already know all the, everything is already here. I had to relearn everything is already here. So there is no days off. I could have took the whole week. I could have been, you know, chilling. All through COVID, there was no sitting down. I was feeding Yale. I was feeding New Haven Hospital. I was doing all of this stuff because 
that's just who I am. So um, I hope CIA will give me the network and give me the light, right? But, you know, everything's up to real. So for ne- for example, next week, I'm actually going to go see another restaurant. I saw one um, last weekend. You know what I mean? So I'm, and I have people in place. So if I can't do something, they will. I want to have my own merchandise today. That person can do it. You need a team. That person can do this. So there's no um, the I mean, I know it. I just want to make sure I heard it from you. Um, I we about halfway through, and I wanted I w- actually there's something I would love to, if you're willing to talk a little bit about. I would love to talk a little bit about your mom. I'm always fascinated by folks whose parents came up in this industry and sort of provide them sort of an example. Um, and I think a lot about what parent industry folks who are raising children now what that looks like in terms of the relationship I mean there's, some, there's something really beautiful about the level of hustle and hard work you have to have gotten from her directly um, but also what, what, I wonder what your imagination was about the possibilities in this industry were from watching your mom um, tell us right. a little bit about her career and what she does and that kind of thing cause so, I'm not really... my mom um, has been in the industry maybe 27 years um front of the house, back of the house, I mean, anything you can think of. She works for corporate, though. So, like, a compass, a Sodexo, an earmark, that's kind of her line. Mm-hmm. And my Multi-trillion dollar was, segment in our industry. Right. It is a huge segment of our industry. And to be very honest, my mom told me from day one, do not become a chef. Don't do it. Um, I've seen her cry many a night. I think that's why I, sh- I work so hard to be able to like, so she don't have to work anymore because I've seen, when I, I've seen the racism, I've seen the sexism, I've seen the, ab- uh, the abuse, I've seen everything you can think of before I even went to high school. I went to a technical high school. I knew it all before I even got there because I've seen her struggle every single To this day, she works two jobs in the industry. And I still see the bull, if you know what I mean. Like so, yeah. um, but me just being me, um, when you have a passion, you have a passion. So she gave me the ropes. You be careful about who you're around. Be careful about who you talk to. Listen, watch. I watched her go through it all, so now I know how to maneuver through the industry. And I think yeah. that makes me successful because, yeah. and I knew. You know, five, six days a week, I knew, you know, 12 hours a day before I could even think about culinary. So I already knew what I was getting myself into. Um, she, listen, she's everything. And that's why I work so hard. So she don't have to work no more. That's but right. It's brutal. It's brutal. It's my, then she has not been nice to my mother. Not even a little bit. It's very brutal. And, uh, black woman is hard. It's very hard. Even moving up. My mom's been at the same job for 20 years. Listen, and they, it's just, it's a, it's a doggy dog eat world. I, thank you for saying that because I really, I've been writing a, li- a lot recently about this idea, right? Like, I always wanted to be a caterer. So, I, my other part of my career was in hotels. Like, I always figured you can learn literally everything you need to know about catering operation from hotels because they literally have the most idealized version of everything contracts, ironclad, all those things, right? But there's something so particular about when you watch a hotel, especially a large one where the mechanism itself is sort of runs on its own, like it runs like clockwork. Yes. Disproportionately speaking, it's going to be black women in this at this era. It's probably going to be black women who are in their sixties, sometimes seventies, but because they, they've been in those jobs, they are the the mechanism in that 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 clock works because yes. those people who are in those jobs making that mechanism run every day. And I guess I'm, I asked you that about your mom because I think a lot about, I think we, is there sometimes feels like we get very, I don't know, very poetic and esoteric about the function of our work and the sort of posture you should have in your work. But the industry actually runs by folks who are in these, in their, in their job, who understand their, their, place in the mechanism right now most people are not going to run their own restaurant or you know or not be in the position of um you know position of power they but they, they understand the, the the power of their job and the function of their excellence makes this they see themselves as part of this whole but what does that do to your 
I don't know. I think about it, especially um, like in places like Charleston. I would love, in college, I was watching these women who had all, I mean, these recipes that are generational, these, like, the, you know what I mean, these dishes that are so rooted in culture, who know these, I mean, just, you know how to make the huge right. toy just because you, you've done it a thousand times this, you know, this year. Um, but something about the lack of respect and the lack of reverence we pay to those folks, right? We don't be interested in the, the front-facing Right. Like pedestal stuff. We don't think about how that work is done. And I wonder, I don't know. I mean, you tell about me, the of it. And I and I understand, like, for example, there's um a dishwasher at Oceana has been there. Oceana's been around for I don't know, eighteen years. Mm-hmm. He's been there since the beginning. There's two types of people. He's amazing, phenomenal. He has to be like seventy, right? Um I don't know if he wanted to move up. Um, there's two types of people. There's people that just want to be in that position, and I've met um, also African American women, just like you said, in the same position for forever. Some people don't want to move up, but I feel like it's my responsibility as the executive chef, the chef de cuisine, sous chef, to move you up. Because I understand you're comfortable, but there's more money to be made. There's more things to to learn. That's my job is to nurture you and grow you up. Because this is how this is how the brigade system works, right? military you have you know your officers you have your command sergeant majors and it goes all the way down to your privates right if i'm an executive chef i would hope to be an owner i would hope that my chef de cuisine becomes the executive chef the sous chef etc cetera, etc cetera, so that my dishwasher goes from a dishwasher to, to a prep then my prep goes from a prep to a line cook then my line cook goes to the that's how it's supposed to be and if i become an owner then i'm going to become a what a restaurateur and then the owner becomes that's how the system should work. So I feel like it's my responsibility to push people. That's on yeah. me. And if they say, you know what, Chef, sure, thank you, but no thank you, then that's okay. But, but the opportunity. Should, yes, give them the opportunity. Yeah. Give it to them. Teach them. Listen, I know you've been a dishwasher for 40 years, but listen, you're better than this. Peel potatoes. Peel the carrots. This is how you sous vide. This is how you, and and, there, and that will spark passion. That's my job to yeah. spark yeah. passion. Yeah. Everybody yeah. has passion. You can't tell me nobody in the same position unless you have a language barrier. And I feel like I've seen that. Like a lot of Hispanics, they don't know how to speak, you know, and that's okay. But if you have passion, all it takes is a leader to spark it. That's it. So there should be mm-hmm. nobody who has 60 years in the same position. And then the establishment be okay with that. That's the problem. That's I think that's a distinction too, because like the to your point about like you know at least making an opportunity possible, because it's the thing about like I think my my some of my some of what I'm interrogating is how we how we judge or how we look at or think about folks who are in these jobs, right? Because this I mean we are because all the time that sort of marginalize these folks. And it's like no, well I sent my I sent you know stories where like these figures become so heroic, right? Like, I sent my kids to college. Like, I sent me, I, mean, I, I raised whole families that off, you know, off of doing this job that you have, that you think is, um, you know, you think isn't, you know, the, the fullest of my possibility. But I have reasons for, you know, but just an idea about lack of possibility is the problem, right? Like, to your exact point, right? If you never got I mean, um, offered the opportunity to, you know, I, just, I don't know, it's something about that, 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 Imagery just makes me crazy because, like, I these agree. women is disproportionately who know how the mechanism runs better than the executive chef. They I don't trust the entire I'm, kitchen. Exactly. I'm going to tell you, I'm over my life in this place. I've seen you're going to be going in a year. I'm still going to be here. And this sense of, like, yeah. Right. Somebody, there's a lot of gatekeepers in the industry, and that's 100%. That's mm-hmm. 100%. There's a lot of gatekeepers in the industry, and that's not okay. So nope. it's my job to say, listen, you're phenomenal. But listen, there's a little bit more money involved. This is an incentive, and people will go for an incentive. If you give it to them and you give it to them right, nobody's going to say, you know what, chef, I just want to peel potatoes for the rest of my life. Not if there's more money involved. Now, there's there's obviously work involved, but people will work for an incentive, which is money. That's right. That's so right. just give them the opportunity and grow people. That's what I'm here to do, to grow people. I as I hope people grow me, right? Oh yes. <laughs> One thing to say. You're so brilliant. Um 
<laughs> Y'all are brilliant. I will, so somebody asked a question earlier about, I think it, you kind of answered it already. We, I talked to you a little bit about the sort of framework of this, this, the, the, the culture of the space right now um, and sort of how you're thinking about level setting or how I thought your philosophy around how you thought about engaging folks, um, as the, engaging students, but also engaging faculty is going to sort of raise the level of everybody. But I guess someone I had a direct question about whether you have a sense or whether you're preparing to sort of deal with that like 25% of old guard chefs who maybe aren't going to be as receptive to your effervescence and your sort of right. you energy that kind of deal um, see, my answer to that is um, that's my entire industry experience so mm, breaking glass I'm, ceilings I respect you chef I 100% this is how this should be made I respect it I have to go by the curriculum and I respect that. But outside of that, you're going to respect me because you're going to see what I can do. You're going to see what I can put out. And then you're going to be like, hmm, well, let me just see. You just got to be positive. I think positivity attracts positivity. Yeah. So I think me being positive, right. being respectful, if you give respect, I'm going to get respect. And I just feel like that's that's the only way I've been able to break through the glass ceilings. Right. So I told, I told this yeah. um, example last time I was on Black People at Oceana, there was another employee. I mean, he's been cooking before I was alive and very nasty, very, very mean to me. Um, and I was new, so I had to like prove myself, right? But I did so exceptionally well, they fired him before COVID. And he's been in the industry before I was even alive. You know why? Because I give respect. Oceana saw that. They saw, you cannot deny my, I'm a fast learner, you can't deny that I can cook. So I outcooked that person. So I respect the industry and what CIA has in place, and I will respect that. But if if there's a way that I can bring something else in, they're going to give me the respect because they're going to see what I can do. That's it. It's, it's all actions. It's, it's in the actions. I could talk, but you're going to see. You know what I mean? Like that's just how I feel. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's it. Because like, because I think there's there's something really particular and beautiful about that that posture right like you can't control other people you can only control how you show up in spaces and how you react to situations and so i mean that scenario right like you to your point right there are there's not very much deviation from this is the curriculum this is how you know we can all yeah. like, be respectful of that level but like all the extras is all the things that you bring uniquely to the table right. and so, so you don't like, like so you don't like, have to not to cut you off but like i've been studying no. the, the syllabus and like the course guide and I see they I have the answers, right? So I have the Culinary Institute of America answers. But I'm in the industry. So for example, right, do you use vinegar to poach an egg or not? The book says yes. I might say, you know what, I agree with that, but you don't technically have to because because I've done it both ways. So th that's just the way to get around it. You stick by the book, but then you say, I also, for example. Do you need to use clarified butter to make hollandaise? The answer is yes, right? But technically, you really don't. Why do you use clarified butter? The, the smoking point, but there's there's better ways. But technically, you don't have to. So just giving them that extra step of knowledge. Um, and to say, when you go to your dorm rooms or when you go home, try. In my class, yeah. you got to do it this way. But when you get to the industry, you're going to be like, oh, well, I don't have time to clarify butter because you remember my class and you could just... Does that make sense? And you no, know what to look for, right? because it's, I think it goes to this idea. I, I feel like it's missing a lot of times where sometimes I think the the, the critique people make about culinary school, which I think is short sighted, is that there's this sense that they're, they're teaching you this one way of doing everything, and that's how you that's what you'll stick to. And I I think the, the more the more effective function of any school, regardless of what industry, whatever, any any framework of education is to get you accustomed to thinking, right? Accustomed to like being rigorous and curious and thinking about the work that you're going to do. This is this is going to be your forever work, right? If you've been called to do this work, this is going to be your job forever, right? So there's all you're going to have. Hopefully, you're going to have made a thousand holidays. Or hopefully you're going to have considered multiple ways to do it and so yes you learn the basic way you learn the, the classic way but you then are going to do it so many times that you but getting your muscles getting your mental muscles accustomed to thinking to think think what right so like okay I, I, i've always learned to make a rule with flour and butter i've been in the industry i've seen chefs do oil and butter why because oil is cheaper now there's this different flavor is different just tell them this is how you do it classically this is how you save money. 
when you get in the industry, then you make that decision. In my class, we're going to do this, but just give them an extra step of information. That's kind of how yes. you get around building blocks of education, 100% Chef Ross. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. And I think it's also, I think it, it also goes into some of the conversations that we have that also feel a little myopic when we're thinking about like sort of culture, right? Like there's something really interesting about putting all the onus on a culinary school to tell, as that's the other part I was getting at earlier too about when people are kind of considering the function of of having a framework for thinking about African American food ways, so diasporic food ways in culinary settings. And I was, and I feel like maybe if you, if you talked to me two years ago, I was wildly um, skeptical of the expansiveness of those spaces to really do that work. And I don't know that I, I just a sense that like y'all aren't built for it. So maybe this is not the, the space to sort of have. But I think a lot of cold, look, to your point about, you made this point earlier too, and I've heard you talk about this before. But it's about being respectful and thoughtful and rigorous about the spaces that you want to occupy. If you really want to do this work, then you have to be curious. And, and you talk about the seven days a week notes. There's always something more to learn. I don't care if you've been in the industry for 50 years. You've gone to this always something more to try or new, new or try. You know what I mean? Right. So if you eighteen years old and haven't considered that there's you're gonna have made have to have made a thousand holidays before you get it perfect, right. then I mean there's just something fundamentally wrong about how you engage in this work in the first place. So I think yeah, that level set is gonna be so cool to have. Yeah. Oh, school. I think I might be one of the youngest instructors there. So I think mm. they're gonna be excited to see um just that young like you said that that young energy so i'm excited to bring that um because my style is going to be completely different from every chef there just because i'm i am chef Ro, i am me but that that 30 year old you know and people are going to be older than me but those 18 to like 21 i think they're going to gravitate a lot towards me mm-hmm uh <laughs> all right y'all i want to make sure we have we leave if you have any direct questions so y'all can put them all in but um i don't know man i just i'm so excited for you i think that there's something really there are many things you could be doing with your life right now you could easily you know put all your time and effort into your restaurant or do any number of amazing things you want to do um but to sort of give yourself over to something is critical it's how we teach these babies is right. brilliant and i think it's Thank a really it, it takes a special kind of person to really give those over to that kind of work um and to do it with the kind of integrity and sort of intentionality you want to be doing it. like that's um so basketball jones wants to know what's your favorite dish to prepare <laughs> basketball jones is one of my best friends what's up um, hey <laughs> nothing i don't i don't have a my favorite dish to eat is mashed potatoes like i know i like work at michelin stars and i'm like like i'm a very simple um type of a person i don't i mean i used to say chiapino is one of my favorite dishes mm, that's a good one. That is. it's yeah. like a seafood um mm -hmm. broth based with tomato um has a nice big <laughs> dish and plants and stuff i like seafood so yeah I love, but I like, like one of, but that's one of the dishes too, right? Like every culture has their version of it, right? Everybody understood, yeah. everybody understood you if you are at the water and you and and also this the dish is always like some of the dishes that every culture that has the best version of it. It's like their it's like their home cooking. It's their like that dish that like no, this is not a restaurant dish. This is not this is that dish where you you get the best of the best of seafood. You right. have the best sauce and like the, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, it's a good. One. It's a good I one. like it. Anything that that makes you feel good to your soul is my mm -hmm. favorite thing to prepare. You know, and that yeah. should be everything. So. <laughs> but I don't know, even though like you know you, you said like you said you the, the simple thing about mashed potatoes, like yeah, but to get mashed potatoes right, yeah. That, you know what I mean? Like that. Yeah. So my mind, like, it's a lot of people talking. Like, there's a lot of very technically, you know, lots of fancy dishes. But if you can get the basic, if to... you can get mouse, a silky, Literally, sexy, egg depending egg on a potato, like all those choices you're gonna make. Yeah, like you gotta get the basics because if you don't get the basics, you won't be able to do anything elaborate. That's right. 
<laughs> yeah, I can't wait for this. I cannot wait just to watch a journey. I've like, I, I mean, make you proud. I promise yes. to make everybody proud. Um, I know there's a lot. I don't feel any pressure either. Like people are like, you feel the pressure to be the first. You feel the pressure to be the first, and I don't because I was made for this. That was this yeah. is what I was created to do. So I don't feel any pressure, um, and I won't let anybody down or myself. So I got you back. <laughs> I love it. I appreciate you so much for your time. I'm like, I just, I'm no, not, not. I'm definitely praying for you constantly, but I just, yeah. I think there's something really beautiful about the way you always show up in spaces, and there's just, I don't know, there's some, just something really magical about the symmetry of it's like the sort of full circleness of it all and just this sort of I don't know timeliness. It's like if if no other time in in modern history was would there be a necessity to have this kind of energy infused into a space as um you know as culturally significant as CIA is gonna be dope. I cannot yeah, wait for it. And I'm so happy that is me. Like yes. and they could have chose any black woman. There's so many amazing black women that have been in the industry longer than me. That, but I'm so grateful that they gave me the opportunity. Um, it's and divine. It's, <laughs> it's but it's, it's there's something really particular about the choice, right? It may it makes it makes me hopeful about thinking about CIA as a place as a you know just there's something really smart about the choice so okay. it sort of says a lot about um where it heads at to bring somebody on like you it's thank gonna you. be amazing thank you so much i you got my contacts we'll we'll connect after this so yeah thank you thank you everybody as well all right y'all this has been so dope i'm gonna I'm, i think i feel like that's a good place to end it um yeah, just congratulations, and we we got you covered up and prayed up, and you're gonna kill it. So we don't even have to. It's no, you got yeah, it's no, you got this. You're gonna you. be dope. Thank you, my love. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. All right. Bye bye. So good. All right, y'all. Um, yeah, Rashara is always brilliant and a lot to say, but just yeah, love on her. If you're not following her already, go over and. Follow her so you can follow his journey. And yeah, next week um, I'll be back with Chef Ashville McElveen. He is the founder of the James Hammond Society and a chef you all are going to want to get more into. So I'll be posting about him a little bit during the week, but it's going to be a good chat. But this is so good. Oh, Rashad is so brilliant. All right, see y'all next week. Oh, and Monday I'm going to be on Afropunk with Haley Thomas. So it's going to be a good one too. All right.